Hey guys, this is Tim, back again with another video. And I initially wanted to uh, to try to get my Houdini 101 course out by this week, but I still have some work left to do. Uh, all of the videos are almost done. Uh, just have, uh, well, like they're 98% done. Uh, just I'm working on the website now to do some final tweaks. I want, just want to keep some more time to sort of polish everything up. But it's uh, it's pretty close now, so uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm super excited. It's uh, it's close to 20 hours of material, so it's going to be super excited. So anyway, for uh, this week's video, what I decided to do is to make a video about um, a HDA that I made about converting textures into Aces color space. So if you don't know what uh, Aces and Open Color IO are. It's basically a way to keep consistency between uh, between the colors of uh, of renders and images between packages. So if you've ever been in a situation where you, for example, deliver the render to somebody and then they're working with it and then the colors end up looking way different, uh, or if you like pass an image along to somebody and it just looks completely different uh, on the other side, on another machine, in another package, well. That's a problem that ACES is trying to solve. Uh, it's been really up and coming. Um, it's been there for quite a while, but now it's really like more and more people are starting to use it. Uh, and I was inspired to make this HTA by a guide by uh, Toadstorm, so Henry. Uh, he is a awesomely talented guy who also is one of the uh, main guys between mobs. Uh, so mobs is being made by uh, Han Han Henry and Moritz. So anyway, he did a guide about what is ACES. Um, and I had used ACES before, but there were still some things that I was a little bit confused about. For example, uh, taking textures and converting them into ACES color space. I wasn't sure how to do that. Well, he basically writes out how to use ACES inside of a whole bunch of different pro uh, programs, including Houdini. And when I read how to do this inside of Houdini, I was... Uh, well, I finally knew how to do it, but I also was like, okay, this is quite a like quite tedious work. I should be able to make this easier. So I immediately immediately proceeded to make this into an HDA that does this for you. So that's basically what this video is going to be about about this HDA. So I will uh, just briefly go over how to get uh, Open Color IO uh, working inside of Houdini. And so just in general, inside, in, inside of Houdini, uh, just some pointers. Then I will go into the in how the, H, the HDA works. Um, and I might do more videos about this later. But for now, I want to keep it just mainly about how to get it working inside of Houdini and how to do the texture converting. And I'll probably do more, uh, more videos later uh, when I've used the workflow in more projects. Um, but generally, also an added benefit to being more consistent between packages is also that uh, colors and highlights and stuff just generally look better. So what it does, and you can see it here, is this, there's, this, there's the ACES CG color space, which has a very wide range of colors. And that is under the hood, what the color space that you're working in. And then what it does is uh, it will then transform these colors into a viewing space which is uh, what you're viewing on your monitor. But under the hood, it will have all of these extra colors to, to work with. Like it's a, well, it's a linear workflow, but more of a sort of a, uh, a way to manage these colors. So if you were working in sRGB, that means you're only working within this space yourself, but it will mean that there's much less granularity between, like if you have green, like this is the maximum green you can have. Well, in ACES, you can have more green and it will just transform it back uh, with a correct color transform in order to sort of well, to to be able to to be displayed in your on your view but as you can see here it makes quite a bit of difference so this would be a typical linear workflow uh super saturated and within aces cg it's like with everything converted you can see it's sort of the colors just look uh there's well it just looks a lot better i will put a link to this blog uh in the in the description so you can read it because again all of this all of the credit goes to uh goes to uh toadstorm for writing this out so anyway um let's dive into how you can make uh aces work inside of houdini and then let's dive into houdini and let me show you how the hda work works that i made 
Okay, so what you first need to do is you need to go to opencolor.io.org and you need to download the sample OCIO configuration files. So once you download those, you need to unzip them somewhere on your uh, computer. It can also be a network drive. Just put them somewhere that's accessible from the machine that you're working on. So I have them on my uh, file server, uh, which you can watch a video about the script link in the description. So I built I bought I uh, I built a uh, a very large file server recently, which uses FreeNAS. So link in the description about uh, no, you can watch that. So anyway, so mine is located over there. But you can um, so you you unzip it there, so you get all of these. Uh, configuration files. So there's uh, there's all these uh, configuration files. There's 1.03, 1.0, whatever. So um, so you basically just point it to a configuration. So com uh, config, uh, and then you need to tell Houdini or your render engine to load that configuration uh, in order to use it. So I'm just using the uh, ASUS uh, 0 0.3. So that's the latest one in here. So anyway, so you just put it somewhere. And then what you do is you go, need to go in your houdini.environment uh, file. So that is located if you go in your documents folder. Um, so this is where, your, where all your Houdini configuration stuff is. And there's your houdini.environment uh, file. So it's there. So it's there. So what you do is you open that up. I'm just going to go into, so that's this one. And then what you do is you type uh, type a line there, OCIO equals, and then between uh, these quote quotation marks, you type the location of your, uh, of the configuration.ocio file. So if you do that, then Houdini will recognize uh, where the, uh, where the open color IO config is located, and then it will use it uh, well, as a default. So let's dive into Houdini. So we're now inside of Houdini. And actually, the viewport now is also using ACES. So if I click perspective and go to correction toolbar, some people might not know this, but there's also actually a color correction toolbar inside of, uh, inside of Houdini. So, and you can actually do things like increase the brightness and stuff in here. But the viewport is now also using ACES. You can see these two tabs here, which weren't there before. It's say uh, um, it's set to ACES. So enable color, open color IO, and it's set to Rec 709. So you can enable it and disable it. You can see if I disable it, it suddenly becomes uh, very dark because the gamma is not correct anymore. So let's enable it. Let's put it to Rec 709. So uh, Rec 709 and sRGB are somewhat similar, but Rec 709 is the newer standard, so just generally use that. And you might notice that there are, uh, and you might notice that there are less um, options here than probably if you just insult your configuration file when you're looking at this and like, whoa, but I have way more options. Well, what you can actually do is you can go into your configuration file, you can edit it, and it was pointed out to me by Dewar, is a friend of mine, um, is that you can actually comment out. All of the stuff that you don't need so you can just put a if you open up the config.ocio you can just you can put custom ones here as well but um so this is the entire configuration so it's a very large file uh so that's basically what it's loading but you can comment out the stuff that you don't 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 generally use it just cleans it up and just put the default one that you want to use on top so i have i have uh commented out all of the other stuff that i don't use so anyway so now our houdini is set up for to uh, well to is, is is set up for the ASUS workflow. So I'm gonna open my Redshift render view now. And again, if you're using another render render engine, then it will also work with uh, with ASUS, but you just need to enable it probably in a different spot. But I'm going to do it in Redshift render view. And Redshift is now set to OCIO, so Open Color IO, and Rec 709. So Let's put some stuff in our scene and then let's start rendering. So let's make a grid in a sphere. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's make a camera. Let's just render. And it's for some reason it always complains because uh, because I didn't have the thing selected. So let's think if I render again. Yeah, 
then it disappears. All right, so now it's set to open Colarion, of course, right now. Yeah, you can see there's already a difference, even though I don't have any material, anything applied. But let's download an HDRI and some textures, and then let's apply them and then start converting those things. So let's download an HDRI. You can go to uh, hdrihaven.com. Let me just uh, go to the default browser. So HDRI Haven provides free HDRIs. Um, you can support him. So it's being run by uh, Greg Sal, and he makes awesome HDRIs for free and you can support him on Patreon. Um, so I suggest you do that if you use his uh, HDRIs. So anyway, download an HDRI here. I decided to, uh, to download this HDRI, a nice outdoor HDRI because uh, we won't be seeing any outdoor uh, for the next for, for the foreseeable future due to the thing that cannot be named so anyway so i download this uh, nice uh, easy ride so let's go into uh Houdini. let's type oh, let's type rs light dome let's go into light and now let's go into hip easy right and i'm going to select my AC ride so it already works, but this is now not in ACES Scholar Space yet. So we need to start converting this into uh, well into uh, yeah into ACES Scholar Space. So that's where my HDA comes in. So you need to download this HDA, and then you need to go into your Houdini um, Documents folder. You need to put it into OTOS. So you can see my OTOS folder is empty because I have my OTO uh, somewhere stored somewhere else, and I just point to those in my environment folder. In general, if you want to install HDAs, you just make a OTLS folder in your Houdini environment folder, and then you put, put it in here. Uh, keep in mind, this HDA is a Houdini Indie HDA, so if you're on Houdini FX, you can still download it, uh, but you probably need to uh, just look into it and rebuild it then to make an FX thing, because I am just on Houdini Indie, so I'm, I cannot make non uh, well non uh non-indie files. It might be that by the time you're watching this, that there that there is an uh, FX version of this. Uh, I might be able to get it converted or something, or when I have FX down the line, I will convert it myself. But uh, that will depend on when you uh, when you watch this. So anyway, so just keep that in mind. So you can get this HDA at timvanhelsdingen.com. Uh, it's available for Patreon supporters. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you can download it. Um, and of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, then you're helping making this channel possible. So you're awesome. So uh, anyway, so if you installed it and then you reopen Houdini, because you need to reload Houdini when you, and whenever you install a new HCA, you need to go into your image network. So that's Houdini's compositing network. And then you go type IMG. So you make an image network in here. And then you can type TVH. So I append all my, uh, all my notes with uh, TVH. And it's called TVH ACES Convert. And then you drop it down. All right, so now we need to put our, H, our, our HDRI in here. So you can see by default, this is set up to dollar root slash assets. That's because if you haven't watched yet, uh, I have a tutorial called VFX Folder Structure, uh, which is about my VFX Folder Structure and a, uh, well, a sort of a tool that sets up uh, Houdini environment variables. Uh, so you can also download that as, if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, so, and it's generally also just uh, maybe useful to watch anyway. So I will put a link to, to this in the description as well. So anyway, so we need to put this to our location of our ACRI. So I'm just, I just have it saved in my uh, hip folder now. So ACRI, let's select it. Right, so you can see it loads it. And again, all of these settings are just coming directly from this guide. So it's just basically doing what he pointed out here. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to tell it to um, what should it uh, should it yeah should it do. So I need to type the extension here. So it's dot .hdr, and it will probably update this hdr file to have the default with a dot because you need to have the dot before it. Um, so I will just put that before I upload it. Um, I could, you could probably automate this if you know Python, so it will automatically grab the extension, but I don't know Python, so I did it. I did this with HScript, and it just uses a uh, 
string replace function. So you need to put in the uh, put in the extension of the image that you're loading. So if you were to load an EXR, you would put dot uh, EXR. If you were to load an, a JPEG, you would put dot uh, JPEG. We will all do this later. All right. So then what you do is you will put it from space. Uh, de depending on what it is, you will. So this is an HDR image, so it's a linear image. So you put utility linear sRGB. So it's a linear sRGB image. Two space ACCG. So you can just le leave that as is. So in this case, this is correct. We will later do an image that's not linear. Um, but for now, let's just have it like this, and then click export to disk. So then we'll start thinking for a couple of seconds. All right. So now it's saved it out. So now we can go into our light dome. Now browse, and you can see now there's an other there's there's a new HDR, uh, and it has the same name, but it now just has underscore ACES appended to it. So that will means we can select it. And probably don't see a lot of a difference. Let me just reload. Because I mean the difference are pretty minimal. You can see there, there, there is a difference in the color. So I'm not sure. Maybe it gets less in, lost in compression. But you can see a little bit of a difference. But if you do this, it will be working inside of ACES color space. All right, so that's the first thing we converted. Now let's convert some textures. So let's apply some textures to, uh, to our ground and our sphere. And let's then also convert those to, uh, to ACES color space. OK, so now we're going to add some textures. So I'm going to be uh, using uh, Megascans. So we have Megascans here. Um, so I'm just going to export two textures. So I will be exporting this cracked rock asset. And I'm going to export this one as EXR. So let's apply this to our sphere. Export. And then I'm going to get another asset. So let's see. Uh, surfaces, so maybe do grass or something. Grass cut, okay. And let's export this one as JPEG. So just so I can show you how to do it with JPEG and how to do it with uh, EXR. Okay. Because uh, it's you need to set it up slightly different because of course a JPEG is not linear. Right, so let's first assign, um, assign our materials. Let's go into Oh, it's already assigned that. Did it also assign this one? All right. So let's uh, enable tessellation on these two. And displacement. Let's just increase our displacement a little bit as well. Let's go on this one. Okay. I'm going to boost my intensity of my light as well. Okay. So these are now not inside of uh, ACES color space. Let's, let's convert them into ACES color space. So let's first do the AXR one, which should be pretty straightforward because that's similar to what we did before. So let's let's just make another one. TVA HS convert. And uh, if I remember correctly, this was the EXR one. So the rock. So that's with Alt E, by the way, we can open this. Okay, so this, so let's select this one, put it in here. Type.exr, because it's an EXR. Let me, by the way, turn off my IPR for now. So it's an EXR. Linear sRGB, that's correct, because it is a linear X, uh, uh, sRGB image. Export to disk. So it takes a little while. All right, so now if we look in here, you can see there's uh, Albedo Aces EXR. So let's select it. That's right. So again, probably the differences will be will be pretty minimal. But again, you're taking advantage of the ACES workflow. So if you want to do ACES, you can do this like this. So if we, if we were to go back and forth, so this would be the regular one. You can see there's a slight difference in colors. But again, the ACES one will be taking advantage of the ACES workflow. So that's one that's working. Now let's do the other one. So grass cut. So this one was loaded in as an JPEG. So generally, if you have the ability to just use linear images, uh, use just use linear images. But if you have to convert them, then this is how it how it works. So you just put it in. Uh, let's let's maybe just do another. Vas convert. Let's 
plug it in. So this is the JPEG, then type JPEG. So we, now we need to change the from space because the from space is different. So let's go to utility and now say sRGB texture. So now it is a sRGB texture, but it's not linear. So where this one was linear, this is just a regular texture. So let's click export to disk. So again, this asset will just always save out an EXR, by the way. Um, so even if you input an HDR, it will just export an, an EXR. If you import an EXR, it will also export an EXR. And if you ex import an JPEG, it will also export an EXR. I'm just always using EXR. So anyway, um, so you can go to, to this thing. So now you can see there's this uh, uh, Albedo ACES EXR. So let's select it. Press render. Oh, by the way, I will have it set to sRGB. We can just put it to red 709. Right, so now it's set to uh, to use ACES. So let's see different. As you can see, again, there's a little bit of a difference in colors. So yeah. That's how all of these are now converted into ASUS color space. So a couple of side notes, you only need to convert color images. So no, you don't need to convert any uh, data images that you just use for other stuff. So no need to convert ambient occlusion, cavity, normal maps, uh, roughness, specular, whatever. You only need to convert, uh, yeah, you only need, need to convert the uh, regular, uh, well, just regular color images. So just so you know, so you're not gonna convert every single one because that would be a lot of work for nothing. So yeah, that's basically how the HDA works. So again, credit goes to uh, goes to, uh, goes to uh, Henry for this guide. Uh, so again, link will be in the description for this. So yeah, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, again, you can download this HDA on timvanhelsdinger.com uh, for Patreon supporters. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because that really helps out the YouTube algorithm, gets these videos recommended for more people, that helps the channel grow and that helps it, well, well then, then at least I can keep making videos. Um, so yeah, if you like to keep up with, with all of the stuff that I put out, so I make uh, weekly uh, either tutorials, uh, uh, vlogs, interviews, whatever, anything CG related, then hit the bell icon, then you'll be notified. So remember, I have a very... I have a very big Houdini course coming up called Houdini 101, which is which will be dropping very soon now. So if you want to be notified for that again, subscribe. And if you like this video and think your friends will also like it, then maybe share it with them. That uh, that will help the uh, this channel grow as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, well, I will see you in the next video. Peace.